beloved, welcome newcomers. So you can come ahead. All newcomers who come for the first time, we put you in the front seat. We're kidding. You can come ahead huh? and sit. There are two empty spaces here. Um, so um, welcome our online audience. If you're joining us online, uh, you'll find us. Our Facebook handle is at Beloved Sons of God. Uh, so write to us and then we'll tell you where we gather in Bombay if you want to come and be part of other sons in Bombay. Um, and uh, if you're blessed by our messages, just write to us and uh, just say hi, hello, how are you doing? Uh, also below this uh, video, I put a link below and if you click on it, it's going to open up to all the PDF. Uh, it's going to open up to a PDF file with all the scripture verses that we're taking today. Um, okay, so uh, today's message is amazing. I've called it, You Are My Beloved. Okay, and if you are present here, then this is what the father wants you to know, that you are the father's beloved. Okay, and uh, the cross and everything, the father sending Jesus, everything on the cross is all about you being the beloved. And the reason and because you're the beloved, Jesus went on the cross for you. Okay, and um, so today I've, I've got some scriptures down and all I want you to hear today are the words that the father is speaking to you. And behind the cross, behind everything, whatever you're seeing, everything that I've even preached in, beloved, you know, when I talk about the new creation and everything, all of these truths that I'm giving you, but there is a voice that the Father is speaking. And I want that voice to come out today to each one of you, and that's saying that I love you. And the reason I want all of these things, I want you to start believing who I am is because I love you. Okay, all of the inheritance, everything, believing you're a new creation. But what is that voice behind? What is behind the cross? What is behind God pulling his children out of the land of Egypt, bringing him into the promised land? And why is he doing all of these things? Because he loves you. Okay, and so Jesus is really, Jesus comes, he goes on the cross. Okay, he dies for your sins, my sins, all because he loves you. The father loves you. Okay, so... Um, <clears throat> I'm going to share about my life, okay? So uh, you've heard my testimony for those who are online. Uh, there is, a, if you go on the YouTube channel on Beloved, there is a, my encounter with Jesus when I met Jesus, okay? And you can, you can hear that. But I'm going to share a few things. But um, so I came from a family where I have, uh, I have an older sister and I have a younger brother, okay? And uh, when I was born, so my sister comes first. And when I was born, now I have been told that my father didn't come to see me. Okay, because maybe I was like the second girl and the expectation for a boy in our country, right? And my brother comes after me. So my dad didn't come to see me, but imagine. So I'm in Baroda. I was born. And then I think he came about two weeks later or, or whatever. He comes to see me. And listen, after he saw me, he couldn't keep me down. Okay. And I have a birth name. Like in our country, we have like a birth name. And then there can be another name. Okay. So my birth name actually was Yashumati which actually has the word Yeshu in it. Now, I know it means successful, but it also has the word Yeshu in it, okay, which is Jesus. In, in Hindi, Yeshu means Jesus. And so that was my birth name. But my father picked me up, okay, and then my name changed. He changed my name to Priya, which means beloved, okay. And um, I have been the pet in my, uh, <clears throat> among the three kids. Like, you know, when uh, you, if you're a parent and you have children and there's just one kid that is just the pet or that one kid that draws something out of the parent and just becomes the pet, the beloved. Okay. And that is not something that you do. That is just something that is just chosen. Okay. And you'll see that relationship. And I, I know that, um, you know, when uh, I, I've heard that I was very cute when I was young. And so my dad, um, you know, uh, my name was Priya. And then I was like always clinging to my father. And I remember that even in summer vacation, my older sister and my brother would go for the vacation to Panjgani or wherever these hill stations. But I would choose to wait behind just because I wanted to be with my dad. Oh, I wanted to be with my father. And you'll see like the one that is the pet in the family, they've got a different relationship with the father. They're sort of clingy. They're always constantly with him. And, you know, they can even tell on the other children that this one did this one did that. So the kids, the other siblings might actually hate the person who is the pet because they're constantly, you know, telling, uh, you know, everything to the father. But there is a special relationship that is there. Okay. And the word beloved means to be loved. Okay, and you can't be the beloved unless you know that you are the object of someone's affection. That means to understand beloved, there have to be two. That means one giving you that love. 
are you understanding so when the father says you are the beloved that means it has to be reciprocated by somebody someone is giving you that love for you to be called the beloved okay and so what does it mean to be beloved it is being the object of someone's affection that you are just at the receiving end that someone is just loving you okay and the only truth i want you to know today if you strip out all the revelations that i've given you and everything is taken away but the only thing that i know is that i was loved and i was made to be loved and everything the entire revelation that i rest on is that i'm the beloved the father loves me and beyond anything be it cancer or anything all of these crazy things that showed up in my life if it really the core of it is i just knew that my father may not have anywhere else it's not happened but it will happen to me and i will see victory just because i'm loved because i'm that dear to my father okay and nothing can touch the beloved and that's the foundation that i want everyone to rest on like when you go to sleep in the night have a sense knowing that you are loved that the father loves you that you may not understand anything and then just because you're loved and you've not seen it in anyone else's life but your life will be different just because you're the beloved not not just a son but a beloved son okay and the portion of the beloved is a bit different like you'll always see in the family like there's just extra bit that you get it you see it in the bible as well like you see it in joseph's life right like joseph got the coat of many colors okay and he was just the father's chosen beloved and it's just by choice and i everyone who's hearing i want you to know by election the father calls you beloved okay and there's a rest in that just knowing that you're loved okay so um, <clears throat> so i remember so we were three kids and we grew up and um, you know i i would always be with my dad but when i felt sick when i was 18 years of age as much as my dad loved me he couldn't do anything for me he didn't even know i had anorexia and if you you hear my testimony okay and uh, that's the time you know my journey when i uh, you know when i went on a search to find out who god is and uh, you know in that um, in that journey i had an encounter with jesus and i remember taking the bible and my biggest rest the day i met jesus was that i am back home to my heavenly father so so isn't it amazing like i grew up i'm i'm a child that i grew up with a lot of love in my family lot of love in my family but there was almost a void that even my earthly father could not fill and i believe that that's that void that only your heavenly father can fill and i remember when i met jesus the biggest confusion that you know i just knew his name i knew my father's name like that you address the orphan heart right like is looking for love and then i just knew that his name is jesus and he knows all about me but i know nothing about him and now i can get to know him and i remember that night going to sleep knowing that i don't have to worry about my life now i'm back home with my father and now everything is going to be okay and that, that's still to date apart from everything that god has done and you know everything that he teaches me i go i put my head back on the pillow just knowing that i'm loved and that sometimes above my understanding even when i don't understand things i see my father work on my behalf for me and i see the portion of the beloved and i i can't put my finger how these these things happened because i don't even have a full revelation of it and that's when you know i'm just told that because i'm loved because i'm fathered because i belong to somebody okay and that can be that is the only the the rest that you should have okay and um, so when i felt sick i remember my dad couldn't do anything for me okay but my heavenly father did it okay and i met jesus i uh, i remember um, you know when i was uh, uh, sick i told you i was uh, anorexic i hadn't eaten for <clears throat> i hadn't eaten properly for 3 years okay and um, the the next day when i met jesus and i got up in the morning i just knew that god is on my side i went and took bread and butter and i started eating it right but i had a faith a son gets faith that Uh, i started doing the word now in the word it says that sons don't walk by sight they walk by faith okay but it wasn't just like i knew jesus and i wasn't doing the word i was actually walking the word so i actually started going ahead in the word meaning now i'm going to eat it and no one's going to tell me what to do and then when i looked in the mirror i started gaining weight so i stopped looking in the mirror for 8 months so you don't see a son who's not agreeing with the word you see a son who's actually moving forward with the word and what the father is saying are you understanding and that's what a mature son is and so for 8 months i didn't look in the mirror because senses told me the word is not true the word is not true no you're not loved 
okay and uh, eight months later you know what happened right i was miraculously healed i knew a demon left me because i felt very light now isn't it told that you need to lay hands on the sick and cast out demons but how did i have because i didn't even have a christian friend for three years after that okay but how did this thing leave me the word says that it is the truth that sets you free so you can actually come to beloved and you keep hearing the truth you keep hearing the truth and the truth sets you free so a lot of people write to me and say i need to be delivered i need someone to pray for me deliverance comes by hearing the truth and standing on the truth and that's how i just knew i remember i was praying i was not telling my parents because i only didn't know what was happening to me but i just knew that jesus is real someone is talking to me he's on my side and i've come back home to my father and i remember three days before christmas okay i was in my prayer time and where jesus spoke to me and said i heard your prayer the first day you humbled yourself to gain understanding of my word and i've come in answer to your prayer and the next day i went to sleep for five minutes that felt like one hour and i knew something left me okay and imagine something left me but no one commanded anything out it left me by the word that i saw i just saw the written word that god spoke to me and this this demon left me and i was completely set free and it's been 20 years since then okay and god changed everything about me but why that's why why do i lay emphasis more on the word of god is because all i did during those 8 months was just hearing the word and hearing the word and something about the word knowing that i was loved that's it i didn't have any other revelation i just knew that i am back home with my father and i am loved and he is here to set me free and that's it and i didn't look at any of the senses or anything that told me against what my father was saying to me and i just blinded my eye to the senses and then the word set me free your father is true to your word okay and um i've seen some amazing things happen in my life since then and uh, i remember you know when the word says that uh, the kingdom of god is like a treasure a man finds in a field and when he finds that treasure he sells everything else and buys that field because of the treasure that he has found and i still remember the day when you know i had put my faith in diets i put my faith in other things in other religions also okay and everything had fallen and the day i met jesus i just knew that this is the truth okay and it was like that treasure and that's something i knew that no one can take it away from me and this rest that i have and i had my dad i had my mom but it's another feeling when you come back home to your father and because nothing can take that away from you okay and you know that you know my father went on in 2004 okay went on to be with the lord but it i never broke or i didn't um, i didn't break in any way is because my foundation was not built on my earthly father my foundation was always in my heavenly father and when your foundation is based in the love of your father then nothing is touching you it's like based on that rock right and so nothing nothing can shake shake the sun A, a matured son is a secure son a secure in his love relationship with his father that's why i always tell you like who shared that testimony of um, hiral you know she went to her father and when she relied on her father her father spoke to her so clearly that she has a testimony today the same thing with hir last sunday she shared an amazing encounter that she had now she came to me with a problem okay but she went back and that same day jesus shows up in her dreams with the, this amazing encounter that she has okay and what does that do to sons it's just making these sons more secure in their own relationship with the father in the bible you have you know john if you read the gospel of john it says always it's mentioned the disciple whom jesus loved the disciple whom jesus loved but it's also mentioned only in his gospel but john also you know when they're at they're having communion okay where are the there, there are the table and um, it says that john is leaning on his bosom on jesus bo- bosom and then i think peter nudges him and asks him ask ask the messiah ask the master who is the one who is going to betray it's almost like they didn't feel the boldness to ask but they felt like john can ask but john also has an intimacy with him so you will always see like the siblings ask the the pet you go and tell dad and ask dad for this and then dad will listen to you why why do the other siblings think that this person will have favor okay but what does that the, what does the pet do the pet has the same father but how is the relationship of that one pet in the family different from the other siblings i believe that pet just hangs out with the father more it's just more clingy it's just more dependent on anything just goes to the father and so it gets this relationship 
out of that father okay and today i want you to know that you are the beloved just by because he calls you the beloved the object of the father's affection and over anything and above everything else okay you will see victory in whatever area you want to see just because you are loved just because the father loves you okay have that sense of knowing that god loves me in everything i am loved i am loved i do not understand it but because i'm loved you love me you will do this for me you may not have done it for anybody else but you'll do this for me because i'm the beloved okay let's get into the <clears throat> word um so look at the first verse okay i put matthew 3:17 when he had been baptized now this is jesus gets baptized jesus came up immediately from the water and behold the heavens were open to him and he saw the spirit of god descending like a dove and alighting upon him and suddenly a voice came from heaven saying now see this this is my beloved son in whom i'm well pleased the father just doesn't say this is my son whom i've sent this is my beloved son beloved means i am there with this person this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased you are the father's beloved that's why our church is called beloved because that's the only beloved means to be loved god made you to be loved why do you have children what do you see with children with their parents they're just there to be loved okay look at john 3:16 Now this is what I want you to hear and I believe by the spirit you will hear this. I also believe today's message is going to be like an impartation. Okay? Where you will just receive something and you you will start walking and and seeing really that you are the beloved. Okay? And how that happens I don't know but it's it's going to happen. Okay? Look at this. John 3:16. For God so loved the world, for God so loved you that he gave up his only begotten son. Have you ever been to a shop and you really like a dress and then you give money why because you like that dress so you give up something because you treasure something more okay but i know that god loves jesus there's no comparison like god loves jesus god loves you as much as he loves jesus but imagine god giving up his son for you okay for you it says your god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life for god did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved he who believes in him is not condemned but he who does not believe in him is condemned already is condemned already i told you when adam sinned when he had the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil what happened he got condemned he fell into a cycle of karma a cycle of sin and death that means there's already condemnation in in this world and so what did christ do the father sent jesus so that you will not be part of this condemnation to set you apart that means other people will have it in their lives but you will not are you understanding so look at this because and why is the condemnation because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of god and this is the condemnation that light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil for every everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light least his deeds should be exposed but he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in god what is the first verse again for god so loved loved you loved you that he gave up jesus for you okay look at john 16 look at john 16 okay a woman when she is in labor has sorrow because her hour has come now this is jesus talking about he's going on the cross he's preparing his disciples okay like imagine god is already telling what he's going to do he doesn't leave you without without just trying to you to figure it out Jesus has already told his disciples look I'm going to go to the cross I'm going to die 3 days later I'm re- going to rise up again okay but maybe a bit of their carnal mind couldn't understand what he is saying okay so look at this he says this a woman when she is in labor has sorrow because her hour has come but as soon as she has given birth to the child she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world Therefore you now have sorrow but I will see you again and your heart will rejoice and your joy no one will take from you and your joy no one can take from you how many of you are in the kingdom today you know it's him and there is a joy in you that no matter what 
goes through but the joy is that you know it's him and people don't know but you know i live with that joy every day no matter what the ups and downs but the joy that i see and others don't that should be your greatest joy that you see things that others don't okay and look at this it says here and in that day now see this what jesus is saying and in that day that is today you will ask me nothing so he's sitting with his disciples and the disciples now see when jesus came he was the only son but after he died and rose again he's not the only son it says that we are we uh, there are many brethren with the one that is risen okay he is the first born again among many brethren that's what the word says okay so see this so the disciples go to him as fix me anything they needed you will fix it you will fix it and so now what he is saying in that day you will ask me nothing most assuredly i say to you whatever you ask the father in my name he will give you until now you have asked nothing in my name ask and you will receive that your joy may be full that your joy may be full there is a small girl kaira here okay it's small little child and the parents will give her everything just for her joy and in seeing her happy it makes the parents happy it says the bible says that when my children bear fruit it brings glory to the father it brings glory to him that's it to see you happy to see you with the testimony it makes him happy it's a relationship of father and son okay and look at this verse 25 these things i've spoken to you in figurative language but the time is coming when i will no longer speak to you in figurative language but i will tell you plainly about the father in that day you, you will ask in my name now see this and i do not say to you that i shall pray the father for you that means jesus is saying even i will not be going and and and, and praying to the father and asking your father give this to her he is saying I do not say to you that I shall pray the father for you for the father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came forth from God Jesus came to bring you back to your father that's it so now you can directly go to the father and have that relationship that's why in the siblings imagine always going to the pet and telling the pet you go to the father always telling that middle person or that that favorite child you go to the father whose relationship is getting built that pets only is getting building and who suffer the other siblings and at some point they will feel they are not loved when i believe the father had the love for all three this one just chose was appointed okay fine and then she just started ging clingy she's just started you know you'll always see the pet is also bold they are bold to go and ask the tough questions also you know is there's a boldness that comes from the security of knowing that you're the beloved that's what i'm saying okay but what am i saying today that the father calls you beloved but not necessarily everyone can receive that i remember when i met jesus okay i heard an audible voice right i heard promise me i came in and um even before i heard the audible voice you know why i believed that jesus was i saw the testimonies that happened in other people's lives i was watching a program i saw so many people get healed and because i saw it in their lives i believed nothing had even happened in mine yet and then after i believed okay i heard a voice and then do you know that for 8 months it did not look like i was the beloved i didn't get healed i was eating food and i was gaining weight more and the word says i'll make you strong not make you fat okay so i'm i'm eating food it totally doesn't look like i'm the beloved because things look get, are getting worse i stopped looking in the mirror but you know why i believed i was the beloved just because i knew i came back to my father and it was just given to me like i believed the truth just because i'm telling you you'll see you'll see the portion of the beloved after you believe the truth first believe that you're the beloved and then it looks like nothing looks like i'm the beloved man i'm gaining weight so i stop looking in the mirror and then when i i believe this when the spiritual realm knows that nothing could take that word out of her just she believes regardless of anything that is happening i started seeing <laughs> i started seeing different things happen and then i started think started seeing things happen in my life that are little really abnormally supernatural that don't happen in others lives but they happen in mine and i know that yep i'm the beloved you believe that first about you and then you start seeing things yesterday i got a call from a from a person and she hears beloved 
And so she was saying, Priya, I've started believing that, um, you know, I'm one with him. It's all his desires. You said we have one heart. It's all your desires in me. And so she's saying, I liked this house. And then I really liked it and everything about it. And she's saying, and then, you know, two months later, this house went away. And now I felt so bad. Then she's saying, I liked something else. And then I really desired it. And again, it went away. And now I feel maybe it's not him in me. I said, you have to believe the word that it's all him in you apart from the experiences that happened around you. That's what it means because then you're saying you believe it because of the things that happened. You believe the truth as a son just because your father says so. And then you get a tug and there are things, crazy things happening up and down because everything wants to pull out that word from you. What have you started believing? You started believing you're one with him. You started believing it's all him in you, that his desires. I said, just rest in it. Doesn't matter if that house goes, you'll get something. But start believing, yes, it's all him in you. It's all him in you. Yes, I do have one heart because the father says it's one heart. And then when it's not dependent on anything that is happening, then you'll start seeing that, oh, I desire it and so it is. Are you understanding? Okay. Believing the word has got nothing to do with your experiences. You believe the word because your father says so. Long before I got healed, I believed I was the beloved first. And I just believe that God is with me. And if he is with me, I'm here to win this. Okay. Do we have some issue here? Okay. They will get it resolved. Just flow with me. If you, you open your phones and you'll have, the, you'll have the PDF file and you can see it. John 17. Now this is Jesus. This is Jesus. Um, before I get into John 17. Okay. Anyone who is listening to me. Okay. I want you to start going to the father directly. With anything, with the smallest thing that you have, have your dependency on him. He will start showing up to you. Okay? That's how you, that's how you sort of like uh, keep getting that life out of him. Okay? Uh, I had this, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to share one uh, testimony, okay? So um, we had this girl, uh, Swagata. Swagata is, a, uh, you know, she shared the testimony on, on Beloved group. So I knew Swagata uh, about 11 years ago, okay, nine, ten, 10 years ago or nine years ago. She was his friend. So uh, she's also somebody who was working with me uh, and um, on one of the shoots and I'd met her. And I remember um, <clears throat> it got late in the night on one of the shoots that we were doing. And so I, I asked her to stay, uh, stay over at my place, okay. And uh, so she stayed over and she had a, uh, I had a dream about Swagata. And she gave my dream. And so the next morning I get up and I tell, uh, I tell Swagata, I said, uh, you know, I saw certain things. I said, um, is this about your life? And long story short, uh, we prayed and she came into the kingdom. Okay. Now, um, after that, uh, I, I didn't connect with Swagata for, I think, about six years. In between, she called me here and there. And, you know, she, she was always in faith. Uh, I remember uh, at that point she was dating this uh, man. Today he's her husband. And uh, he got lost. Okay, he wasn't answering the phone for one month and she was all panicking, what is happening? And um, so Swagata calls me and she's like, Priya, can we pray? Because he's not even answering his phone. Okay, so then we, we prayed, uh, you know, I, and I reminded her, I said, do you know that Jesus, Jesus loves you and anything that belongs to you belongs to the Father. I said, so just rest. So we just prayed for her the next day after disappearing for one month, he answers his phone. Okay. And uh, she, she calls me up and she says, yeah, he said he's fine. He was just going through something and he wanted his space. So long story short, uh, she comes back, they get married and now they're going to New Zealand. Okay. She wanted to go to New Zealand. She and her husband, she goes to New Zealand and um, they didn't have the visas. The visas came in time. And this is a person who just knows that all I told her was there is a heavenly father who loves you. And she just knew that she was loved. She comes into the kingdom. She gets saved. She goes to New Zealand. I connect with her. 10 years later, she's on the group. I've added her on our church group. I never hear from Swagata until a uh, few weeks ago because she's here's friend also, okay, in our, who's in Beloved. And so um, Swagata calls me. I get on a, on a call with her like about three weeks ago and she's like, Priya, I know I haven't been in touch with you for nine years. She's saying, but I have to tell you, Jesus has been so amazing to me. And then she started sharing all her testimonies of when she went to New Zealand, how someone came and gave her a Bible. And, you know, she's saying, Priya, every time, every time I go to work, I pray in tongues. And I'm thinking, like, I don't even know if I laid hands on her for tongues. So, but I, I realized that, you know, the kingdom is so big and that you don't have to be, you can just be a part of it and God is working in the larger picture. So she goes then, so she says that, you know, I came here 
as an immigrant and I got a job, but now the law has changed. And so I came to hear that I need to make so much of money for me to get my residency. So she's saying, even as that thought came, she's saying, I just knew that the father is with me. And so it's going to be okay. And so I just started looking out for other jobs. And this job of Louis Vuitton, now Louis Vuitton is a very big fashion house, was just, she just read about it. She's saying, I'm going to apply for it. And she applied for it and she got through the fourth round. And that's when she had made this call. She's saying, because Priya, uh, you know, they're even giving me the money that I want and everything. And this is not just, she's getting like four times whatever she was making more. Okay. And she's like, um, and now I'm, I'm going to have the next uh, interview. And this was, you know, when I was preaching on abundance on that whole series, when she called me, I said, Swakata, I said, this job is yours because of blood, because he loves you. Okay. Because you are the beloved and this will come to you. And so she, uh, and I told her, I said, when you get it, I said, share the testimony on uh, the group. And so she did, okay? And so through six rounds, she finally got that job. And she's working with Louis Vuitton. And she's like, this is above and beyond anything I've ever, ever wanted, okay? And all this girl knows is that God loves her. And that's it. And she gets all of, all of her desires and every, all of her needs met just because she has a father who takes care of her. And your rest and my rest, apart from anything, is just knowing that you're loved. And because you're loved, you've come back home to your father, even sometimes when you don't think clearly, see things clearly, praise God that there's somebody else seeing, seeing things for you. I, I thank God for some of the unanswered prayers that I have. Because when I couldn't see straight, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling so good that there's somebody else making decisions for me. You know, I, I recently, a couple of months ago, I saw this house that I really liked, okay? And it was at a very less price, so I was wondering. And then, uh, you know, it was like I had to go and, and lock it up at like 1 p.m. And I get a call at 12 p.m. noon, like, oh, she sold it. And I'm just thinking, it's just like a one-hour gap. Like, how can it just go? And I was feeling like, oh, how did it go? Because it seems like such a good value. Eight months to nine months later, I got to hear from another broker, oh, good you didn't go for that, is because it has some litigation. It's got some things that on the outside you can't see, but it's not a clear, clear deal, okay? And I'm so happy that in certain things that I can't, that I'm fathered, and that my father knows, and certain things just, so you can rest knowing that you're loved, okay? And um, just Swagata's life, uh, you know, and after Swagata, uh, you know, Swagata woke up on Beloved is because Heer and Jigar are her best friends or very close friends, okay? Heer is. And after Heer came into the kingdom and she put some photos on Beloved, suddenly Swagata wakes up after eight years and says, what are you doing in the kingdom? Yeah, this is my friend, you know? And uh, and she suddenly woke up and she told Heer that, yeah, yeah, Jesus is real and he's done all these amazing things in my life. It's all because of him. And uh, just to see that story, because I knew Swagata, after Swagata came Heer or I don't know what, uh, you know, uh, through them came this other girl called Rupali. And I have to tell you Rupali's story. Rupali was this, uh, you know, she was working with me on a show. And on the show, apparently, I was reading a Bible once. And now I've not even shared about Jesus with her. But she goes and gets, she goes and buys her own Bible and starts reading the Bible. And I'm surprised to just see her read it just because I'm, I'm reading it. Okay. Now, I must have told her about Jesus. I don't remember this. I meet her six years later or seven years later. And uh, she said, ma'am, do you remember, uh, you know, you told me about Jesus. I was like, okay. She's saying, after I left your project, I went back home and in my building, they used to have like how you have the Bible studies and, you know, praise and worship and all. So I started going there. She's saying, and today I am a worship leader in my, in my church. And she leads worship. And you think like this girl is just hung out with me. All I must have just told her, yeah, the father loves you, Jesus. And then God does and does his own work. And the kingdom is so, so real. And, uh, you know, to just see her at wherever she is, everything about your life is a finished work. That means whoever is coming in your path is probably a lost son. And so sometimes it's, I'm, imagine I'm just reading the Bible. I'm not even telling her read one. And she goes and buys a Bible. It's a relationship. And so you realize everything about the sun, even your atmosphere around you, everything is affecting the people around you. And so it's like a vibe that you're giving out and they just know that, yeah, this is the father. They recognize. All children will always recognize their father. Okay. And that's why even when you're going and you're just saying, hi, hello, they'll, they'll respond to your words differently because they're the father's words. Okay. So look at this. Okay. 
I was so encouraged by uh, Swagata. I mean, Louis Vuitton is no joke to get in, right? You know when that happens, that's completely gone. And she had so much competition, she said, like people were applying, but she got the job. And one thing I want you to know, if you're even hearing this, don't ever have, if you're in another country, don't ever have the identity of an immigrant, okay? You have the identity of a son. So just because Swagata is an immigrant and in another country, does that mean now she needs to get something lesser? No, humans do, but not for a son. You can be anywhere and get the best portion because your portion is coming from your heavenly father. Okay? I remember even when I was in US, I was refusing jobs that were less money. I was in New York and uh, I used to come back and I used to even lie and say that I didn't get it. Okay? But I had people who were doing all the paperwork and everything for me because it didn't match a certain standard. And so because I knew that and my family and everyone said, you're an immigrant. I said, no, I'm not going to tell them like, you know, like I belong. My father loves me and it'll come from him. But I had this in me that how does it matter whether I'm Indian or whether I'm from another country? I should get the best because of my father, of who my father is. And I remember uh, it's another thing that God had called me to India and I had to come back for beloved and everything. But I at the end, I got this amazing offer from this biggest fashion house and they were willing to do everything for me at an amazing pay, everything. And do you know that to get there, I had to say no to some things. So when those uh, petty you know, offers were coming, I had actually say, no, I don't want this. I don't want this. It doesn't taste good. I don't want it. I don't want it. And then I got this amazing job with everything that I wanted. A son has the ability to even say no. And you can only say no when you're the beloved. You're so used to eating delicious things. In Isaiah, there's a verse that says, even Jesus, he learned to discern between good and evil. It says, by feeding him, he was fed with curd and honey. Curd is the abundance of milk and honey. And it says that the son of man even was taught to discern good and evil. Now, you think to make someone, uh, you know, discern between good and evil, you give them some, uh, let me give you some honey and let me give you some salt. But imagine the father's way is to give you curd and honey. That means make you eat so much good that you can't handle the bad. That you're just so used to eating out of the king's house that you, you know that this is what goodness tastes like. That how can I take this? That's how even you'll never lamb, land up compromising girls and boys. You'll never land up compromising if you know how much God loves you. Then you won't sell yourself short. Someone who's selling themselves short doesn't know how valuable and, uh, you know, the worth that the father has put on you. Okay. Look at this. Uh, let's go ahead. Okay. John 17. Okay. What is this? John 17 is what we are all about and why are we preaching this? Okay. This is the prayer that Jesus made before he's going on the cross. He's praying for all the disciples. Now hear this with your heart okay Jesus spoke these words lifted up his eyes to heaven and said father the hour has come glorify your son that your son also may glorify you as you have given him authority over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him what is eternal life and this is eternal life that they may know you the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent what is eternal life that they may know you that they may know you. If you don't go to him, how will you know him? If you keep going to the person next to you, tell me about Papa. Tell me about Papa. And what will that person say? We both have the same Papa. Why don't you just go and hang out with Papa and maybe Papa will tell you what he's like and maybe share some different things with you. Are you understanding? You know, at your birthday, do you get what the other person likes? Or do you get what you like? Isn't it weird to get, suppose it's my birthday, my birthday is coming up, right? And I like dresses. But now if Sheetal comes or my sibling is with me, okay, and it's her birthday and she likes wearing jeans, I'm not going to give her a dress. She will get what she, she wants and that's what relationship is. If you don't go with your father, if you don't go to your father, how, is he, how are you giving him the opportunity to celebrate you? I remember once I was sleeping many years ago, okay, and I woke up with this voice. I celebrate you. I celebrate you. I had an audible voice that spoke to me and said, I celebrate you. Imagine the father celebrating you. It's like throwing a party every day about you. And that's why I love celebrating people. Like I just want to throw a party and make you feel all good and make you feel so loved like pamper. I'll send you to a spa or that's what if people even come from ministry, I like to do that. You know, not take them maybe to minister also. I'll be like, yeah, let's, let me take you to a spa. Just be, be loved. Know what it is like to be loved, okay? When you get money, spend some money on yourself. 
I, I believe the father loves it is because you're valuing his most valued possession. Okay, by the money that you're having. Okay, look at this. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus himself whom you have sent. I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, O Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. This is not everybody. This is Jesus saying, I have manifested your name to the people, to the sons, whom you have given me out of this world. They were yours, you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. What have they done? They have, they have kept your word. There is something, you know, David is called, like in the old, if you read, a man after God's own heart. But if you see all the relationships, like if you see Joseph's life, if you see David's life, if you see Abraham's life, there is something about someone knowing that God is with them, but they're also with God's word. I told you, like, I know that I'm the beloved, that God loves me. And the way I'm loving my father back is when I believe what he says about me. That's you reciprocating that love. Are you understanding? That's me taking what Papa is saying and going and telling my other siblings. Yeah, this Papa said this. You asked me, yeah, he said this. Okay? This is what it is. But it is receiving the father's words and believing on those father's words. Okay? Look at this. Okay? Let's go down. Um... <clears throat> I have, eight, verse 8, for I have given to them the words which you have given me, and they have received them. I have given them the words which you have given me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came forth from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them, I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. And all mine are yours, and yours are mine. Now, this is how I live my life. All mine are yours. My mummy, my dad, my sister, my bag, my laptop, my phone. All mine belongs to my father. So whatever belongs to my father, no one can touch. Nothing that belongs to the son, anyone can touch. Okay? That should be your rest. You're the beloved. Okay? All mine are yours and yours are mine. And I am glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to you. Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are one. That they may be one as we are one. Now when you see Jesus, when you're reading the Gospels, Jesus is never saying, Father and me. He always says, if I am working, my Father is working. If I am speaking, these are not my words, my Father is speaking. He never divides himself, and neither should you. That is oneness. Where did the division come in your mind? And that's why, where did all of these things come to this girl who was saying like, oh, I started believing and now it looks like it's all going. I said, yeah, those experiences are messing up with the truth. Don't let the experiences tell you who you are. The day you let the experiences tell you who you are, you're, you'll find yourself going around the mountain again and again and again. You are the beloved apart from your experiences. I lost my father. Okay. I never let that experience tell me I'm not loved. Because it, it didn't need to. The word tells me. And I've always seen, I was never like, just amazing things just started happening for me. I was always fathered. You believe the word first. Okay? Now look at this. Uh, where was I? <clears throat> Verse 12. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me I have kept, and none of them is lost except the son of perdition. That means Judas. That the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy, that they may have my joy fulfilled in them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Are you of the world? Are you of the world? Yeah, if you're a son of God, it's, if you believe you're of the world, you're deceiving yourself. You are not of the world. Just as Jesus is not of the world, I am not of the world. Superman's son will be Superman. They are not of this world. Their DNA is different. They look like humans, but they're clearly not humans. Supernatural species. Okay? I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them. Separate them by your truth. Your word is truth. 
as you sent me into the world i also have sent them into the world and for their sakes i sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified by the truth i do not pray for these alone but also for those who will believe in me through their word that they all may be one as you father are in me as you father are in me and i am in you that they also may be one in us that the world may believe that you sent me and the glory which you gave me i have given them that they may be one just as we are one one means not two someone asked me yesterday god's will my will i said religion seeks after god's will when you think like it's outside and you're something different you're born of the will of god in one, in the gospel of john it says the son of god is not born of flesh nor of the will of man but is born of the will of god so your will and his will is one will now start believing that truth first and then you'll start seeing everything coming into that alignment and then what can happen when you start believing on the will of god certain things happen and doesn't look like it don't let that change who you are and what the father says you are and you believe that and suddenly after you, sometime you'll see that everything it's all him in me i died it's all christ in me are you understanding apply this what i'm saying okay apply this word now look at this um <clears throat> I in them and you in me that they may be made perfect in one that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me that means he is saying that the world may know that means everyone will look at the son and say you love this person just like you love Jesus you are loved Have you ever been to a party where the father is just celebrating in in school we had this okay there was this one really rich girl like really rich and so when it was her birthday we got sweets from the taj like these big boxes okay and then you have those other kids who were giving ravel gaon sweets right like when it's their birthday but when it was her birthday we were very excited because we knew what the father will do for this chick you know like we are just but we got we because we and you want to become best friends with that girl because you'll get two boxes and not one but but what does it show all the kids are seeing that this one now look how the father will celebrate her birthday okay but see what it's saying here it's saying the same thing okay that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me you know in the old testament i i tell you know i love it when he parts to see you know he divided the red sea for his children then they're walking through the red sea then he's turning this water into blood you know then these crazy things they're getting food from heaven and this looks like showing off like really showing off these are my children you know why because in in if you read in um, in exodus it says that in the very area that the egyptians boasted about their god the god of israel landed up showing that he was god in the very area that they were boasting like oh check our gods god was like oh let me show you what it means to be their father and god over you okay i believe that god shows off loves to show off his sons okay because it brings him greater glory and so i i i've told you this right like i've had these amazing things like i went to uk and i met the prime minister and all of these things happened and i didn't know anything i just knew i was loved and that god loves me and because god loves me he will move heaven and earth for his son anything he will do for you including opening up baristas when i wanted cafes india didn't have and india got baristas going to the uk who's going to wear my scarf father the next day bumping into the prime minister it's no joke going to his house 10 downing street you just ring the doorbell without anything and all of this thing was opened up for me and i just knew that whoa i mean so much to my father that's all i knew that i am loved and if i am his beloved he will do anything for his beloved so don't mess with the beloved okay how do you how do you get to the father touch the child you touch the father okay imagine touching the beloved whoa please don't do that okay but that's your portion and so you walk in a security a beloved is fearless so that's why david can go and he's had this relationship in he's probably maybe his even father's pet he's the youngest one okay and now he goes he's taken down the lion he's taken down the bear and so when goliath shows up because he's hung out with his father he's a very secure son in his father's love and so he can just go ahead when whole of israel is not going against goliath imagine thousands not going against one there must have been so much wisdom and strategy with kings and meetings 
and this guy is saying above all your wisdom and meetings and everything when even Saul comes and gives his armor and says wear this chain mail he's like no this is not tested I don't want this just taking his pebbles going he's saying this is enough and he's taking one slingshot and it says that sling went right through his head and then he took Goliath's own sword and cut his head off you see this guy he didn't have anything but just boasting that I am the beloved I know my father and because I know my father, you see what my father will do for me. Okay, go to sleep every day, walk knowing that you are the beloved and everything is added to the beloved, including the inheritance comes above everything. I just know that I'm loved. I just know that I'm loved. Okay, and you strip every revelation out of me and I'll just know that, but this will happen to me and this will also happen just because I'm his pet. He loves this one, he loves this one, but I am the beloved. I remember someone coming and telling me when I was in the UK, you know, now hear this. Priya, I know that you know that God loves you. And you, I know you've heard that God loves so and so and God loves. But God really, really, really loves you. Now this is not for me. This is for you. Hear that. I know you've heard that God loves you. God loves you. Your God, God, God loves you. God loves you. But then I want you to know, you... God really, really, really loves you. You're special. Okay, set apart. And I've always seen that. I've seen that it happens to them, it happens to them, and it doesn't happen to me. And I want something to happen, it didn't happen to them, it didn't happen to them, it happened to me. Okay, that is the beloved. Okay, you just have it. And it's just, it's just imparted to you. Just receive that. Okay. Uh, yeah, so the father is just receiving that the love that you have loved me may be in them and I in them. 1 John 4. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. Now see this, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. There is no fear in love. That's why David could go and he's fearless, is because he knows he's loved. I think David also means beloved. The word David means beloved. Okay. When you know that you're the beloved, you can take down anything. You can have a report show up and it doesn't matter what it is, is because you're the beloved. I remember when um, I heard that my dad had cancer and uh, you know, when I heard it, I'm, I'm not kidding. Okay. Because that time I didn't have any Christian friends or no one to even tell me that, you know, like uh, put any doubt in my head. So when I got that report, I was like, okay, so now I think this is the plan. Like now I will go and I will lay hands. This will come down and my whole family will get saved. And uh, so people really thought that they should pray for me because I was not taking news seriously or she's not facing reality. But the truth is, is because my faith or my uh, thing was not in the report that I was seeing. It was in, in, in my father who's so supernatural and what I can do with it. Okay. And so um, what am I saying? When you know when you're, you're loved, anything that can come up, you know that you can overcome it. Okay? There's no fear in love. Any relationship up, it won't stand. That's why anyone, whoever I brought into the kingdom, I've simply told them, there's a father who loves you. You are addressed to the orphan heart. Which son does not want a father? Which child doesn't want? Everyone, you might have physical parents, but there's an orphan heart there and you address that and you just say there's a father who loves you and that lost son will come home. You preach heaven and hell and you're bringing them through fear. You'll see those very people are not even in the kingdom with you. They're away. It's because no relationship that is based on fear will stand. It's based on love and in love, in the security of love. Do you know that a, a kid can do anything that is really terrible but because they have a secure relationship with the parent, they can do terrible things and still go own up because they know that they are loved. But someone who fears may not go to the parent and own up. Okay, that's why the cross, what is the message of the gospel? That all your sins are forgiven. Past, present, future, everything wiped by the blood. It makes you a secure son. Okay, look at this. And a secure son is a matured son. John 1, 8. And of his fullness we have all received and grace for grace. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, who is in the, in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. Where does it say Jesus is? In the bosom. In the bosom of the Father. 
it says here the only begotten son jesus who is in the bosom of the father and so are you in the bosom of the father i believe i will have more testimonies next week after you start consciously walking in the revelation okay just knowing that you're loved that you have a father who immensely loves you even the tithe anything i told you i'm doing it na simply because not about just because i want to just because i belong to my father and not to you you didn't make me rich my father did it's not to get rich are you understanding it is to honor him because i belong to my father and i'm about my father everything about my father look at luke 2 okay now this is jesus okay now he's a young kid he's 12 years old now see this i want you to see this so his parents are looking out for him they go for this festival every year jesus his parents went to jerusalem for the passover festival this is in luke 2 When Jesus was 12 years old they attended the festival as usual after the celebration was over they started home to Nazareth but Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem his parents didn't miss him at first because they assumed he was among the other travelers but when but when he didn't show up in that evening they started looking for him among their relatives and friends when they couldn't find him they went back to Jerusalem to search for him there three days later they had finally discovered him in the temple sitting among the religious leaders teachers listening to them and asking questions all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers and his parents didn't know what to think okay so what does his parents say son his mother said to him why have you done this to us your father and i have been frantic searching for you everywhere son why have you done this to us your father and i have been frantic searching for you everywhere but why did you so jesus said this but why did you need to search he asked didn't you know that i must be in my father's house you know now this is a physical place right he's saying but that's what happened after jesus came and you prayed you came back to your father's kingdom back to your father's house and so imagine someone saying why are you searching for me i am back in my father's house okay didn't you know that i must be in my father's house but they didn't understand what he meant then he returned to nazareth with them and was obedient to them and his mother stored all these things in her heart jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with god and all the people what i love about this is imagine now he's a 12 year old boy okay and where do they find him in the father's house about his father's business hearing his father's words and engaging in conversations all about the word of what his father says and it's no different for a son you know I, i'm telling you when i met jesus i just knew that it wasn't like i was praying jesus heal me jesus heal me every day that is not beloved i walked ahead with the word and i didn't know anything no one told me it was by faith you're not supposed to go by what you see and everything what i'm preaching i just knew that i've come back to him and now what he says about me is true and everything else is a lie i just knew this without even having been preached or no one, n- nothing told me that and i knew if he is here i just believe his words what he says about me so can you see that there was a rest knowing that yeah i'm loved he loves me but there's also me walking forward in that word And so sometimes you say God loves me God loves me but you guys are not doing anything just chilling then believing also you're sick you can fall sick no God loves me and now reciprocate back to that love what the father is saying engage in that love and now you take on those words yeah God loves me and so what he's saying is true about me papa ka hi baat sunega dusre ka nahi sunega and then you you engage in that conversation and now you see how everything comes down david also he knew God loves but he went to take goliath down He is not just saying God loves me God loves me and just sitting there. No, he is like yeah I will go ahead and take this Goliath down. His fearless love love makes you confront your fears because you realize that there is nothing to fear. Okay, imagine it standing up against the beloved. Anything that is standing against the beloved will fall down. Because you are not alone. The father is with the beloved. Are you understanding all the victories are the father giving it to you? Okay? Look at this. Uh, look at now hear this Matthew 6 what are you hearing in these why have i taken these verses down therefore i say to you do not worry about your life what you will eat and what you will drink nor about your body what you will put on is life more than food and the body more than clothing look at the birds of the air for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns yet your heavenly father feeds them are you not of more value than they 
are you not of more value than they which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature so why do you worry about your clothing consider the lilies of the field how they grow they they neither toil nor spin and yet i say to you that even solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of this solomon was a very rich king and he saying even he didn't look as good as these lilies now if god so clothes the grass of the field which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven that means it's so short lived will he not much more clothe you o you of little trusting that you have a father o you of little faith okay therefore do not worry saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear for all these things the gentiles seek that means they don't have a father but for your heavenly father knows that you need all these things but seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you what do you hear in all of this he's basically just saying have you forgotten that you have a father if i can take care of the birds if i can clothe the grass if i can clothe the flowers and they are not as valuable as you are how much more will i take care of you what should your greatest rest be that you are a fathered son beloved means you have to belong to somebody to be called the beloved you're not an orphan you have a father and he's figured it all out for you in your whole life is a finished work and if you just learn to rest sometimes you'll realize that it's so finished you know there was something that happened on the set yesterday and i really wanted to fix it like hebron brought today uh, uh, in uh, in worship he said that sometimes you think certain things need to be fixed but actually there's nothing that needs to be fixed and so do you know what i did it looked like maybe i should send a text message and say this and so you know do all of these things i came back home i did nothing okay uh, i didn't i didn't write to anybody i didn't do anything i just went to sleep and um, yeah that's it and then suddenly i saw a, a call from that person okay and and something happened and i got so excited and i was like wow i said i didn't thank god i didn't go and fix it because i i think that the other person felt guilty and they they did something okay but uh, i just realized like you know don't be so impulsive that you need to fix certain things sometimes things just don't need to be fixed you just need to rest and you'll realize that everything about your life is already finished and father okay trust me you are the beloved okay it's only everything is coming to the beloved okay the best portion is coming to the beloved look at matthew 6 ask and it will be given to you seek and you will find knock and it will be opened to you for every one who asks receives and he who seeks finds and to him who knocks it will be opened now see this or what man is there among you who if a son asks for bread will give him a stone or if he asks for a fish will give him a serpent if you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will your father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him how much more will your father in heaven give good things to those who ask him okay luke 12 look at this are not five sparrows sold for two copper coins and not one of them is forgotten before god but the very hairs of your head are all numbered do not fear therefore you are of more value than many sparrows the very hairs of your head are all numbered i know that kaira is loved by her parents but i don't think they said counting her hairs okay but the father is saying that i love you so much that i'm counting the very hairs of your head are all numbered you know sometimes you can have not maybe not raised by parents that were the best but it doesn't matter whether they were good or bad is because your identity or your foundation is not meant to be your earthly parents it's meant to come from your heavenly father so you have no excuses for cribbing about a terrible life that you had okay when everything is based on your father trust me it's always going to be good if you if you made your foundation on earthly things that's when it's bad okay i'm a, an example of it i i was i i had a very good father to me but he couldn't help me he couldn't save me only my heavenly father could and when he went away it didn't matter it's because my foundation was never on him even his love for me as good as it was okay look at ephesians 3 for this reason i'm just going to take a few more verses and we close okay for this reason i bow my knees to the father of our lord jesus christ i'll go down and look what it says here okay uh <clears throat> that christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend understand with all the saints what is the width what is the length what is the height what is the depth 
to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. It's amazing that before this, that he who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above we, above everything that I ask or think, it comes first by knowing that you are loved. And I believe like even the whole, you know, the Tony Blair thing or whatever I had to bump into the prime minister's wife, it simply happened because I just do that if God loves me, God will move heaven and earth for me. God will move, open any door for me. I can do anything because my father loves me. And so it comes with just knowing that you're loved. And now he's able to do so much exceedingly, abundantly above all that you ask or think because she knows that I'm the beloved. She knows that I love her so much. Okay, look at this. Look at Ephesians 1. God destined us, you, to be adopted, to be his adopted children through Christ Jesus because of his love. This was according to his good plan, goodwill and plan and to honor his glorious grace that he has given to us freely through the son whom he loves. God chose you, God destined you to be adopted as a son just because of his love. Romans 8, 31, 32. So what are you going to say about these things? If God is for you, who can be against you? How can Goliath or anything, any even sickness stand against you? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. Won't he also freely give you all things along with him? If God, the father did not spare his own son, in what area do you think God is withholding something from you? That means that thing has to be greater than Christ. How can that be? It's a lie. If God did not keep his own son for you with all other things, He'll freely give you all other things along with his son. Okay. Romans 8.38. I'm convinced that nothing can separate us from God's love. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Not death or life, nor angels or rulers, not present things or future things, not powers or height or depth or any other thing that is created. Nothing can separate me from God's love. John 15.9. As the father loved me, as the father loved me, as the father loved Jesus, I too have loved you. Remain in my love. Stay in my love. Jesus goes, does everything. It's only on the cross. He says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But Jesus lived with the sense knowing he's the beloved. That's the only word that has come. This is my beloved son. Not this is my powerful son. This is my holy son. Not this is my righteous son. This is my beloved son. So what is the revelation? Those are the truth you only need to know. Yes, you are righteous. You are holy. You are most powerful. But you are loved. You have a father who loves you. You belong to somebody. You're not an orphan. And imagine in this truth, he goes and conquers the cross. He rises again. That means the father says, this is the truth that I want you to be grounded on and built on. That above everything, above every revelation, everything, my understanding catches up later. Trust me. Sometimes the only thing I need to know, you love me. Because you love me, this is going to happen for me. That's it. I don't understand things, but I know that this will be my portion because I am your favorite. You really, really, really love me. I'm your beloved. It's not happened to others. This will be my first testimony and the whole world will hear it then. That is, my, that is what I always believe. Okay. Look at this. God shows his love for us because while we were still sinners, Romans 5.8, Christ died for us. While you were still sinners, you were not best. You were sinners and Christ died for you. So imagine, it's not based on your works. He loved you and so he sent Jesus for you. In your mess, he got you saved. Ephesians 2, 4, 5. However, God is rich, God is rich in mercy. He brought us to life with Christ while we were dead as a result of those things we did wrong. He did this because of his great love that he has for us. You are saved by God's grace. It is a gift of God. Why will God do the very things that you want in your heart right now? So that you will one day say that he did this because I am his beloved. Simply because I am his beloved. Okay? Because God loves me. That's the very reason why you'll have that testimony. Okay? Deuteronomy 7.7. 7. I've taken this from the old. Okay? But this is God pulling his children out of the land of Egypt into the promised land. Okay? And he says this, For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for himself, a special treasure above all the people of the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love on you, nor choose you 
because you were more in number than any other people for you were the least of all the people but because the lord loves you and because you keep the oath that and he wanted to keep the oath he swore to your fathers the lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of bondage why has god done this everything because he loves you you know why it says don't do idol worship i love what it says why don't do idol worship you know why he says not because it's sin he says because i'm jealous <laughs> imagine a father being jealous about you your attention going somewhere else you're calling somebody else your father when i have given you birth how jealous only true love will make you do that because he's a jealous god he wants all of your attention okay it comes by knowing that you're the beloved dude okay look at this 1 john 4 Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Listen, if you don't know that God loves you, it says you do not know. You don't even know Him. It's an amazing testimony what Preeti did today. She comes today. He, God loves you. Your biggest, only revelation I want you to ever have out of beloved is that you are the beloved. <laughs> you were made to be loved the object of his affection and whatever you have it will be given to you and you'll have all the inheritance everything because the inheritance also comes only to the beloved i believe even in inheritance when they when they're doing like some isko is itna you get one house and all i believe like the beloved gets some you know like you know you see in joseph right like benjamin got two extra like portions whatever he was eating when he was sitting when joseph is sitting you know all his brothers were there but on benjamin's plate he got double portion in benjamin's sack there was more grain and more his benjamin is like the pet does he do anything no by appointment he is and so beloved you are chosen to be the beloved by appointment just because i've chosen you you are my beloved okay that's it now be the recipients of his love and you can't do anything you can't do you can't earn beloved <laughs> you are just beloved by grace and you learn to receive his love and sometimes i've had people ask me how do these things happen and all i can say it's it's really by grace it's by chosen to be beloved okay and it's it's so amazing right it's not what you do it's just by grace like you it's you you are chosen to be loved okay i believe even my name was beloved so that i today i'll be preaching on that okay by the, before the foundations of the world zephaniah 3 in that day it shall be said to jerusalem do not fear zion let not your hands be weak the lord your god is in your midst the mighty one will save he will rejoice over you with gladness he will quiet you with his love he will rejoice over you with singing how many times you've seen when you have your children who is singing the child is singing or the father is singing the parent is singing over the child he rejoices over you with singing it's amazing when the kids sing for their parents but do you know that the the greatest joy is yeah like taking their in your arms and you're singing the father the parent singing over the child he rejoices over you with singing 1 john 3 behold what manner of love the father has bestowed on us that we should be called the children of god sons of god what manner of love the father has bestowed on you that you should be called a child of god a son of god therefore the world does not know us because it did not know him beloved now we are children of god and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be but we know that when he is revealed we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is and everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure what manner of love the father has bestowed on me to call me a child but not just a child a beloved child okay now i don't want you to understand and go today and start believing and start doing something to be the beloved okay you don't do anything to be the beloved kaira didn't do anything kaira is a child and she is just she just belongs to the parents and the parents just love her okay it is just something to be received and i want you to receive this truth you didn't do anything to be the beloved you have been chosen to be the beloved and the father calls you you are my beloved in you i'm well pleased my beloved okay and you go to sleep today you walk out you're going for that interview anything that you're going off facing any if a lying symptom has showed up you go knowing that you're loved 
that your father is with you in you and in that love nothing can stand up there is no fear in love it will bow down okay knowing that you're a uh, secure in his father's love and uh, a loved son a secure son is a matured son okay now please go to your father for all things don't send the i mean don't send the sibling if you want yeah the beloved goes directly to the father doesn't go to send the siblings okay go to the father you'll get the portion of the beloved okay every time so let's uh, pray now okay uh, everyone who's hearing let's give a spiritual tithe okay say this after me <clears throat> father i thank you i'm a beloved son jesus you are my high priest and right now i give you a thanksgiving of all the increase of all the life you brought to me right now even as i heard this truth yeah and just worship him right now with it oh rahadari arada ba kashiv rahadala arada ba stori arada ba vahas teri arada ba father i just pray right now that everyone who's heard this message i thank you that there's an impartation that they will just know that they are loved that father you love them dearly that you send jesus to bring your children back home to you that you love us that you call us your beloved and we rest in that just knowing that you're we are fathered and everything is going to be okay just because we are loved we're back home with you and it's a rest it's a rest i just thank you that there's no fear in knowing that you're the beloved father everything bows down to the father's beloved i thank you father in jesus name amen